Good morning students welcome to Sel Online School and now online classes today we are going to start chapter 1 of civics class 7 the chapter name is constitution of india the first thing is that what is constitution constitution is the that body of rules and law according to which a state is governed every state has a law rules regulation so constitution is a combined combination of that rules law and regulation according to which that state is governed it clearly mentioned people's right and duties what right the peoples of that states has been given by the country and the constitution and what are the duties of the citizen that is accepted from the citizens to do for their states next is making of the constitution as we know that indian constitution is the longest constitution of the world so the question arises how it forms the first thing is that the capital version that came to india in 1946 made certain proposals to constitute a constitutional assembly in that dr rajin prasad was elected as the chairman of that constitution assembly and dr rajin prasad was elected as the president of that constitution assembly and dr b r ambedkar was elected as the chairman of the drafting committee of that constitution assembly it took 2 years 11 months and 17 days to complete indian constitution third point is that the constitution was finally enacted and adopted on 26 november 1949 but it came into force on 26 january 1950 here is a story about that why two months has been taken to enforce the constitution of india because in 1930 26 of january is declared by the congress that until we don't get the complete freedom from the britishers every year we celebrate 26 of january as a freedom day of india so this day is taken as the declared the india republic the fourth point is that our constitution is a recent constitution of the world and it has 395 articles and 12 schedules next is preamble of the constitution preamble we can in short say that it is the introduction of the constitution preamble of the constitution may be called the introductions to the constitution it declared india to be a sovereign socialist secular and democratic republic it also sets out the basic ideas of the indian republic <coughs> next is that nature of the indian states and basic ideals of the indian republic as we have already studied in the preamble of the indian constitution what are the basic concept of the indian constitution are declared in the preamble the first point is that india is a <coughs> sovereign socialist secular democratic republic these words represent the nature of the indian states the ideals for which the indian republic stands are justice liberty equality and fraternity together they assure the dignity of the individual and the unity of the nation the first point that is justice it means all the citizens are given the complete justice whether they are rich poor high posted or the lower posted it doesn't matter every citizen of the india is given the proper justice and he is equal in the eyes of law second is liberty so all the citizens of india whether they are belonging to different communities religions or different fields they are given the equal liberty they can follow any type of the religions they can follow any type of the occupations in the territory of india third point is that that is equality it means all that peoples of india are equal in the eyes of law and in the eyes of government there will be no discrimination of the peoples of india according to their caste creed or any social status everybody is equal in the eyes of law fourth point is that fraternity it means a sense of brotherhood every citizen of india feel like brother and sisters nobody will make any discriminations among themselves like in one family everybody is able to understand the feelings of one another so like in that nation of india every citizen of india whether they belong to hinduism muslimism jainism christianity whatever religion whatever creed whatever god they are following they all feeling the one brotherhood that they are indians 
next point is that saracen state what is the meaning of that india is a saracen state because she is independent both internally and externally india can frame her politics policies the way she likes she is also free from any control from a foreign state it means india is totally independent nobody is going to control it neither external power neither any internal power it means here is a government that is elected by the people and every term of 5 years we can replace if the government is not doing well for the people of india the citizen of india has given the right to vote they can elect the different candidate to form the government next point is socialist state what is the meaning of socialist state a socialist state would aim to eliminate inequality in income it seeks to reduce the gap between the rich and the poor it also safeguard and protect the interests of the poor and the weaker section of the society socialist means equality in the social scenario of the country it means every citizen of india has given the equal right to choose their income sources there is no made the discrimination of any religions any caste and the the gap between the rich and poor we see that in many countries there is big gap even in india there is big gap between the rich and the poor peoples the income sources are limited for the rich poors and they are unlimited for the rich peoples so by this thought of the constitution it is make clear that every citizen of india has given the right and it is a duty of the government whether it is central government or it is state government that is has provide the equal status and equal opportunities for the rich and the poor peoples to make their income more and get the social status in the society so there will be no discrimination about that and government has to provide all the citizen equal platform to introduce their income next point is that secular state so what is a secular state as the name suggests that a secular state neither promote nor restrain any particular religion it treat all its citizens in the same way in respectives of their religious faith all citizens are free to practice preach and profess any religion it means india has no any particular religion for its state head it means all the religion of india all the peoples of india they are free to follow any kind of religion in the territory of india government cannot force any people to follow a particular religion or to discriminate any people who don't follow that type of the religion next point is that democratic state as the definition is given that is told by abraham lincoln the former president of usa government of the people by the people for the people it means a government that is chose by the people for the people to the people it is a government in which people choose their rulers by voting for them in election the constitution provide for adult franchise it means all the people who has attained the age of 18 years in the country has given a right to vote they have to make their names in the voting list and we know that in the state level and in the central level every 5 year terms there is a election in our country so all the citizens who has attained the age of 18 that is called the age of majority they were given a right to vote and they can choose their government by voting by their own way next point is that a republic state republic state the term republic denotes that india shall have an elected person as the head of the state there is no king or queen in republic president of india holds office for a term of 5 year it is elected by the elected members of parliament and state legislative assembly that is the representatives of the people of india it means republic state republic denotes the peoples of that country it means the head of the country is elected by the people and in our india uh, our country the supreme head of our country is the president that is elected by the representatives of the lok sabha and legislative assemblies of the state it means mps and the mlas of country has elected the president that hold his terms for the 5 year and after that the next election will be held if he is doing the good job for the india our country so it can uh, hold up a 
terms of his office for the next five years by the elections. If he is not going to do well for the country, people can remove him. It means there is no kings and queens as before the independence. We go back to the 2,200 years, 300 years back. We have find out that many kings, queens, and the local provinces were there, and peoples hold a small state over their long period of time, and they became the king, queen, and after that, their sons, daughter, they became king and queens. That process is not followed even today in our country by the democratic state. It is given that there is no queen and king. People will. Choose their head by the voting for the term of five years. The next basic features of the Indian constitution is that a right. In the beginning, we have studies about that. The definition of constitution is state the rules and regulation and the rights and duty. That is the basic part of the constitution. So first, the rights are given in the Indian constitution. There are six basic rights are given that are given to every citizens of India. That are number one, right to equality. It means all the peoples, all the citizens of India are equal in the eyes of law. Second is right to freedom. It means all the citizens are free to follow any type of the religions, faith, and they are free to move here and there. All territories of the India in one state, and there are 28 states and the nine union territories, we can move anywhere. There is no restriction that one people of the state cannot move to the other state. They can move. Third is right again exploitations means nobody can take any advantage of his post his money and do not explore any peoples every citizens has given the right they have to choose their best fourth point is that right to freedom of religion as we have previously discussed that all the citizens are free in india that they have to choose any religion that they like it is depend on their own choice that what religions and what faith they are going to choose there is no foundation about the peoples that they have to follow a certain type of the religions and the faith fifth point is that culture and educational right culture and education right different communities live in our country and they have different type of the cultures and their educational system so they can they can follow as they like their cultural angles and their cultures features they can practice among their communities there is no foundation that they are not going to hold any culture functions here like that we have seen that many culture functions like the holy diwali eid christmas all type of the religious functions we have performed together in our country the last right that is the right to constitutional remedies it means constitution has provided a right to every citizen that they can go to the court if anybody is violating above the five rights given by the constitution they can go to the court according to article 32 of supreme court and article 226 in the high court they can go to the court and they can make that papers bound that they are not violating their rights so these are the six fundamental rights that are given by the constitution to all the citizens of India that they can live properly in all their territories of nation. So that is the end of today's class. Hope you all have studied well. Thank you.